around 11 o'clock this morning from the Wadsworth Airport, and that's just a couple of miles away from here. But the plane crashed into a body of water just a quarter mile down this road that you see behind me. What we learned today was that one body was recovered from the water, a man who they believe to be the pilot. Now, there's no indication that there was anyone else on board. Uh, Sergeant Ray Santiago with the Ohio State Highway Patrol says it appears the crash happened after, uh, shortly after takeoff. What we believe is that he had, uh, he had just taken off and had only been uh, airborne for a couple minutes, maybe two, three minutes. Pilot was in contact with the tower. Um, the, the nature of that tra traffic we don't have uh, at the moment, but there was um, reports of a, a possible mechanical failure. The NTSB was contacted and the FAA is on scene investigating. investigating. Um, now investigators are looking into exactly what happened, whether the plane hit the tree line on its descent or if there's debris scattered in the wooded area. So, of course, we'll keep you latest uh, updated with the latest. I'm Manny uh, Abraham, 3 News. All right, Manny, thank you so much. All right, now on to your feet at five. Today, the state of Ohio announcing 6,179 new cases of COVID-19. And while that is about 1,000 fewer than yesterday's number, it's still a very big number, and it still bumped up our 21-day average, which now, Betsy, is over 4,000 daily cases. Well, just looking at hospitalizations now, they're down from yesterday with 216 new patients reported today. Overall, COVID patients now make up just under 10% of inpatient capacity. And after a summer of steady decline, this has been the thing we were talking about. Finally, things are opening up, but now we've turned the corner again. And there are questions about what is exactly causing the surge in cases. Three News reporter Lydia Espara joins us now. She's live from Oktoberfest at the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds, where large crowds are expected throughout the weekend. Lydia, good afternoon to you. What are experts saying about large gatherings outside this holiday weekend? And you're right, this is uh, the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds and people are starting to trickle in. What they're saying is what's causing the spike, we have said it over and over again, it's the unvaccinated. How much more can we say it? So we want to know if big weekend events like this are looking at super spreaders. Here at Oktoberfest at the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds, there was a social media push for the unvaccinated to wear a mask. It includes patrons and vendors at the Geography. County Fair, it's optional to wear a mask. Both venues believe being outdoors will decrease the chance of spreading. We're really encouraging social distancing um, to, to the best of our abilities and kind of making sure everyone's safe. We spread this event out a lot more than it used to be. If you walk around, you'll see tents spread out. We have two instead of one large one. We have uh, Purell that's been able to take care of us um, with sanitization stations. And this fair is this weekend and next weekend, but the uh, Fair Geauga County, that's only through Labor Day. You can see people are starting to trickle in here. They are expecting loud, large crowds, but it's still early in the past, though. This place would be packed because, of course, it's after work hours and they're serving beer, so that's probably what they would be looking for. Anyhow, we'll have more about what's going on at Geauga County coming up at 6. Back to you. All right, so Lydia, there at the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds with Oktoberfest, have they adjusted their plans at all? Are they expecting larger, smaller than normal crowds? They have adjusted their plans. In the past, as I was saying, this would have been packed, but they're not sure because of COVID. You know, some people want to come, some people don't. At Geauga County, they have about 200,000 people a year, and because of COVID, they're saying, we just don't know. Hmm. Lots to look into, for sure. Lydia, right. thanks. Thanks, Lyd. Well, look out for the infestation of army worms. You may have heard about this. They're all the rage on neighborhood websites the last couple of days. If you notice brown patches of grass in your lawn spreading very quickly, you might have exactly that, the army worms. Ugh. They're tiny brownish green caterpillars, and they are devouring lawns all over Northeast Ohio, and they are doing it at lightning speed. So here's the deal. They migrate north every year, but because of this summer's southern storms, the cutworms or army worms, moths, blew up north early this year. Then they land in your yard, they lay their eggs, and these eggs hatch into the worms, and they just chew green grass 
until it's gone, leaving cutworms to chomp on anything in sight. We talked to a homeowner who said the damage was so swift, it made him emotional when he saw it. It made me want to cry because, you know, I'd have to replace this whole yard and I can't afford it. They can annihilate a yard. They, they just can. I wouldn't have had any clue. I, I was thinking I didn't water enough. It has nothing to do with watering, unfortunately. There are ways you can treat these little guys and bring back your green lawn. Treating your grass with commercial pesticide will help, but it might not kill all of them. It's best to call in the experts, let them handle the problem, or it could continue to spread and cost you big time. Now, if you can't afford to treat your lawn professionally, you can always wait it out because these cutworms life cycle is only a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So they do turn into moths, they fly away and everything is gonna be fine. My mother has them and her neighborhood, her entire neighborhood was treated Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Betsy, this, this neighborhood, it's taken care of by a, a local nursery. Mm -hmm. The lawns are plush and beautiful. And almost overnight, Ooh. a third of my mother's backyard is completely brown. And there's a way you can tell if you have them. Take a glass of water, okay. warm water, fill it with, or put some Dawn dishwashing soap in there and pour it on the grass. If these, they don't like cold, oh. that's the good news. You can do this in the evening when temperatures are cooler. They will come out of the ground if that water is, is colder than their temperature and you'll see them right at the surface. It's a big problem and it's really difficult to get rid of them. They look pretty yucky and you They're know, gross. The, I guess if there is any good news out of this is that, you know, typically the best time to overseed your lawn and try and restart things is in the fall. So. Yeah. There, once they fly away, you'll have a window where you can replant, hopefully. But, yeah. Oh, man. I spoke with an expert yesterday about this, and he did say that the grass, the roots are fine. They don't like, they're not eating the roots. They oh, want, that's good. They want the green blades. Oh. But they're still killing everything on top of the surface. So your root system should be okay. Yeah. But your grass on top will be dead and brown in no time. Well, we're not in a drought situation right now. But it sure, so. it sure looks, that's what it looks like, to yeah. be honest. It looks like you're in a complete drought. It's, it's not the brown. dry. Yeah. It's the worms. All right. Well, we move now to the damage that was caused by Hurricane Ida. The powerful storm cut a path of destruction from the deep south all the way to the northeast and has claimed more than 60 lives. In the northeast, tornadoes and record flooding took neighborhoods by surprise. This is video from Bridgewater, Connecticut, where rescue crews had to help a family trapped in their house because of rushing water. Meanwhile, in New Orleans, power outages started to become dangerous. Millions have been without power now for five days in the sweltering heat. I don't wanna cry anymore, I'm tired. Yeah, and burning up at night, you know, you wake up, you feel like you're in hell. FEMA deployed more than 1,000 people to hard-hit states to provide generators, water, ambulance crews, and more. President Biden also visited Louisiana to survey the damage, vowing to help. Hey, how about the Ohio State Buckeyes last night? They opened the 2021 season at Minnesota, and we told you yesterday this was going to be a tricky opener. Gophers head coach P.J. Fleck always has his teams motivated and ready to go. Ryan Day was starting a redshirt freshman at quarterback C.J. Stroud, and even though the Buckeyes opened with a defensive stop and an offensive score to go up 7-0, they trailed at the half 14-10. And the Fox announcers, Betsy, were losing their minds about the potential upsets. They were <laughs> giddy over the chances that Ohio State might lose on national TV in the opener. But the Buckeyes were having none of that. Stroud came out in the second half, and man, I'm telling you, after that shaky first half, he looked like a world beater. Ryan Day told him at halftime, kid, we're going to keep slinging it. And that's exactly what they did. Stroud looked polished and poised in the final two quarters. Betsy, he threw for four touchdown passes as Ohio State opens with the big 45-31 victory. There were some tense moments, even into the second half. It, it was a little dicey. But you could see as the game went on, the kids settled in. Mm -hmm. He became more confident. He, by the way, becomes the first Buckeye quarterback. We went back 25 years. It may be ever. But for sure, in the last 25 years, he's the first Buckeye quarterback ever to throw three touchdown passes of longer than 50 yards. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. The stats just keep on coming. <laughs> Gotta love the stats in sports. You know, the funny thing I think about is, is these kids are on the field and they're just push, push, push and trying to do their best training is a lot of them are starting to get paid now. Those endorsement sure. deals are kicking yeah. in. And I'm wondering if there's 
you know, just a few who would just put the extra burner in there a little bit more just well, to try and lock in some of that money. Yep, it's a good idea. It might be a good uh, good incentive. Here, here's just for some context. The fourth string quarterback on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Yes. Fourth string. He should be a senior in high school right now. Okay. He's he's making $1.4 million in endorsement. He's the fourth stringer. Not, didn't, hasn't seen the field. <laughs> hasn't seen the field. And he's, he's making $1.4 million. Oh, That's the new boy. world of college football. By the way, the Buckeyes – now get a little bit of a break 10 days before their next game. Saturday of next week, they are home against Oregon, and that's going to be another stiff test. Yeah. Oregon's got a good program. Get those yellow shoes rolling. And green and all kinds of uniform combos. It's yeah. pretty fun. Okay, next on What's New, the air show is back. After a hiatus last year because of the pandemic, we're going to show you the new and improved performances that you will see in the sky this weekend. Wow. Plus, if you're a fan of the hit TV drama Grey's Anatomy, we have some exciting news for you. Who's making a return to the show ahead in Pop Break? Ooh. Mm -hmm. wow. How about that? And Betsy's doing double duty tonight with the weather. How's it look out there? Um, it looks great, actually. It's super comfortable. Good hair day today. Oh, must, nice. Must just Low say. humidity? Uh, yeah, you can see it right here. I have a fantastic hair day. I will happening. say it looks fabulous. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but over the weekend, it starts to go, you know, a little crazy with the humidity on the rise. Then next week, it kind of evens out for us. When the humidity goes up, the rain chances also go up. I'll have the details straight ahead. Well, it is a Labor Day weekend, and man, are there a lot of big events planned in Northeast Ohio, including, that's right, the Cleveland Air Show. The Thunderbirds were out practicing this afternoon, and we were all excited here at the station because we could hear them buzzing around our building all day today. It I is love that sound. The coolest, it really right? is. We get like a little a free preview. We do, uh, right on the back deck, the front deck. You can probably see them even if you're just driving through downtown. Well, the air show is part of one of our Rediscovering Ohio series today. It's making a comeback after a year off due to COVID. Three News Dominic Ferrante shows us what's new at the air show in 2021. It's not a bird, but a plane. And not just any plane. 
some of the fastest, most expensive jets and airplanes in the world, right here in Cleveland this weekend. So we're literally setting up the facility and we are on actual taxiways and runways, setting up the showgrounds. So it's kind of like setting up an amusement park, only aviation style. The air show is back in the CLE. And headlining the show is the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, who consulted with Disney for the first time in over 38 years to change up their act in the air and on the ground. I'm really, really excited to be back, and I know we got a few folks who are from Cleveland on the team, and they're really happy to be coming back home and put on a show for their families. Like so many other events here in Northeast Ohio, the COVID pandemic put the brakes on the air show last year giving this team some time to rework their show and make sure this is one of the best yet. When you go back and you review your debrief video and you get, uh, you know, you hear how the crowd enjoyed it and you get feedback from everything, uh, there's just nothing quite like it. And of course, there'll be other jaw-dropping acts that you'll be able to see and feel for miles. Dominic Ferrante, 3 News. All right, Dominic, thank you very much. Tickets are available online only. Remember, this runs through Monday. Yeah. What a thrill. And you don't have to pay. I mean, it's great to have front row seats and be right there at Burke Lake Front Airport. Believe me, it's a totally different experience. But you can also just come hang out downtown in some Anywhere. of the parking lots. Yeah. People do that all the time. They do, sure. And just watch the air show. And it's yeah. one of those really fun things. Edgewater Park is a very popular spot to try and catch the planes as they're coming back and forth in Voinovich Park, too. There have been a number of years where the Indians have been playing a home game mm -hmm. during the air show. Three or four times I can think of that I've been there. And you're watching a baseball game. And at the same time, you're looking up to the skies and you're watching the air show because at times they go right over progressive It's not field. distracting at all yeah, for anyone. Yeah, imagine the pitcher looking yeah. into the sign. He wants total silence. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. fun. So Afterburners are just the best. The weather is going to be, I think, pretty good, right? Beautiful. So they have right. two shows that they will typically run. There's a vertical show and a horizontal show. They got the vertical show most likely stacked up for this weekend because they will not have any problems with ceilings. Jay, read the sign. I'm, I'm not going to make the animation you go until you read the sign. Can okay. you see it? It says, use it or lose it. Winter starts in 109 days. That's right. So that <laughs> is your forecast for the evening. Get out there and enjoy. And this is going to continue as we head through the weekend, too. Mostly sunny skies, temperatures in the 70s. Just very comfortable to be out and about in Northeast Ohio. If you're more into the particulars, there's a look at the temperatures fading through the 70s this evening. We'll be in the 60s by the midnight hour. Yeah, we're going to have some clouds around. We've got clouds right now, but it's really not hampering a beautiful day. Temperatures are right now in the low and mid 70s around northeast Ohio, a little cooler near the lake, a little warmer farther south, and uh, that light north or northerly wind continues. The few clouds that we had out east, you can see the puffy clouds, those are fair weather cumulus clouds. It's basically just a uh, little thermals, little heat bubbles bubbling up as uh, the heating of the day takes place. These wispier looking clouds, these are high thin clouds. You probably saw that uh, uh, cirrus deck coming through and that is uh, basically what we have not only for today but tomorrow and the clouds are going to thicken up as we go through the day tomorrow because this is sitting out to the west of us. This is our next weather maker, and timing is everything, as we always tell you. So for the day tomorrow, we'll see the increase in clouds, but it looks like the rain chances hold off till tomorrow night. We may have a few lingering showers on Sunday, but then once we get into Monday, I think things are going to be drying out for us again. Big picture, your national design our hour by hour forecast. Notice how the rain showers stay out to the west of us for the most part. There could be a few rogue showers in western Ohio tomorrow, but this is 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and we are still basically rain-free. Tomorrow night then, that's when the better chance for rain to pull through northeast Ohio comes in. We may have some lingering showers, outside chance of a rumble of thunder early in the day on Sunday, but by mid to late Sunday afternoon, that starts to clear out, and I think we're going to have... There they go again. <laughs> Darn those Thunderbirds. They probably have to go gas up out at Hopkins or something. It's just the best sound ever. Anyway, uh, by Monday, I think we're going to be pretty good, too. So 80 degrees for the day tomorrow. Clouds will be increasing. Rain chances come in late. On the lake, going to be nice. That's another very popular place to watch the air show. Just be careful. Water tip off Cleveland, 75, going to be flat. Phenomenal boating weather. Union Home Mortgage Forecast. Look at this. Temperatures upper 70s through the weekend. Rain lingers Sunday, as I mentioned. We may have a slim pop-up chance on Labor Day, but other than that, we have dry weather through and through. Very comfortable conditions stick around. Jay.
All right, Bets, thank you very much. Mamma Mia, here we go again. A 70s revival is heading our way. Details next in Pop Break. Then, the fun game, some guys played with this pup. It's pretty funny. It's worth the watch, and it's coming up. Hi, we're going to be talking about, no, I didn't, I did not take advantage of trying any Twinkies, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do it again. It's great. Welcome back to What's New on this Friday before Labor Day. Time to take a pop break. That means Kiara Cotton's here. And you have What's New with Nicki Minaj. I certainly do. The hip hop heavyweight has always been one to keep her life private. So you can imagine now that she's married and has a son, things are under even tighter wraps. But yesterday, she gave us a glimpse into her world as a mom with a carousel of videos of her son, who we only know as Papa Bear, ahead of his first birthday. The video shows the family spending time together and even captures the baby boy trying to utter a few words. Mm -hmm. Nikki and her husband, Kenny, welcomed Papa Bear last September. And calling all Grey's Anatomy fans, the next, this next story is going to change your life. If you thought you'd seen the last of Dr. Addison Montgomery, you were wrong. Dr. Montgomery, played by Kay Walsh, took to social media yesterday to announce that she'd be making a comeback for season 18 of the long-running series. She even shared her excitement with a TikTok trend, answering the question she's most frequently asked. The new season of Grey's Anatomy premieres later this month. And Mamma Mia, here we go again. ABBA is set to make their musical comeback this year. 40 years after the release of their last studio album, the Swedish pop group will return with a 10-track project titled ABBA Voyage and a virtual concert residency in East London. The four-member group has sold more than 400 million albums and singles during their half-century careers. The new album, ABBA Voyage, will be available November 5th. And last but not least, Jay, you called this one, a Bishop Sycamore documentary is in the works. Kevin Hart, Complex, Haven Entertainment, and Cleveland native Rich Paul are joining forces to tell the story of the controversial Ohio high school and football team. Jay? They can't get that out soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, maybe they can get some answers because it doesn't seem like anybody else can. Kevin's, he'll get answers.
Kevin will get answers. Rich Paul, too. Yeah, they and Rich business. Paul. Yeah, they'll they get the answers. Who's going to make the money out of it, though? That's what I want to know. All of them, but who's I want to be in on it. Not yeah, that no, it's a good project. Who, who out of the Bishop Sycamore side of things is going to oh. make the money out of it? Because they owe people money, supposedly. So oh, they owe a lot of people a lot of gonna money. That's going to be a really interesting yeah. twist on all this. The documentary will be like three hours long. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? It's one of those stories where I've had so many people just want to talk about this. What's yeah. with the high school? What do we know? Everybody wants more information. And trust me, we're getting it as fast as we can. and We're passing it along. Mm -hmm. But I think it's one of those stories that is just fascinating yeah. to just about everybody. Yeah. Super interesting. How could that happen? All right, Keith. Thanks. Sure thing. See you a bit. Time for our Worth the Watch now. You've heard the saying, monkey see, monkey do. But let's turn that into doggy see, doggy do. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great. We had a golden years ago, Cleo. God rest her soul. She was such a great dog. Anytime we would make that noise, she would follow. Oh, I love how he puts his ears back. Like, why are you doing that? Okay, fine. <laughs> I love they all throw their heads back, and so does Doggy. Yep. That's great. Awesome. Great video. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of folks are uh, going to be howling at the moon this weekend because they're going to be out and about. But keep in mind, we want you to have a safe and fun holiday weekend. That includes staying healthy. With a rise in COVID cases this week, we'll walk you through ways you can still enjoy your Labor Day. Then spreading love in the land, we're going to tell you which of our Cleveland sports teams is teaming up with a nationwide organization to help those in need. And Cleveland's Oktoberfest is back. Mike Polk Jr. explores what's new at the fairgrounds. I wonder if he's gonna have his lederhosen on. I hope. It's still ahead of We all can hope. And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. 
Okay, let's get you up to speed on the big three things you need to know about here at 530. We begin with Ohio Highway Patrol confirming that the pilot of a small plane in Wadsworth has died. Just after 11 this morning, crews got a call that a small plane crashed into a body of water shortly after takeoff. Ohio State Highway Patrol is leading the investigation. They tell us the FAA was also on scene. No word at this hour on the pilot's identity. We'll have more on this story coming up at 6. Today, President Biden visited Louisiana to tour the damage from Hurricane Ida. He promised to help them rebuild. Millions of residents are on day five with no power and are batter, battling dangerously high heat. As a matter of fact, there's heat advisories through that area. Meanwhile, in the Northeast, states are cleaning up from major flooding and tornadoes, all associated with the remnants of Ida. This is video from Connecticut where rescuers had to evacuate a family trapped by rushing water. In all, the storm has killed more than 60 people. And turning now to the coronavirus here in Ohio, number of new cases in the last 24 hours, 6,179. And while that is about 1,000 cases less than we reported yesterday, it is still substantially above our 21-day average, which is now over 4,000. ICU admissions and hospitalizations are also down today compared to yesterday. And let's just hope that that's a sign of things to come. Yeah. We have been trending in the wrong direction now for about a month. And that, that case number of 7,000 yesterday, 6,000 today, pushing that 21-day average over 4,000. Bets, th we, it, it felt like in May and June mm -hmm. that this thing was winding down. Our case loads were, you know, in single digits. Mm -hmm. We were doing so well. And that Delta variant has really got us back on our heels now. So if you are going to one of those events this weekend, if you're if you're not vaccinated, they recommend that you do not go. Right. If you're vaccinated, they recommend that if you can't social distance, that you wear a mask. And just just be safe. It's please. interesting too because we really haven't reported recently the positivity rates, but the positivity rates oh. have of course been going up. Double digits. We're about 12.1 or two or three uh, percent here in the state of Ohio statewide. Yeah. Some counties in Ohio, Lawrence County, the southernmost county in Ohio, has a positivity rate over 20 yeah. percent. It's like 24 percent. Very so dangerous. It is continuing to spread, and unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's going to slow down just in time for this Labor Day weekend. And that's our top talker, the surge in COVID cases that has doctors worried about this weekend and all the festivities that go along with it. 3 News' Marissa Sines talks with the experts about the safest ways to still have fun. The forecast doesn't look so bad this Labor Day weekend. It'll create the perfect setting for you to enjoy the holiday with your family. But it could set Ohio up for a greater surge in COVID-19 cases, which is already too much for frontline workers. We're already tired. <laughs> From state officials. I urge Ohioans to follow safe COVID practices. To local doctors. This wave is only just starting and Labor Day weekend could really add to it. The message, to be cautious and use care. The hospitals are already, we're not full, but we're stretched. One local restaurant pioneering vaccine requirements in Cleveland. The Fila Serving Cafe announcing without proof of a COVID-19 vaccination, you can't dine. We went through some potential Labor Day activities and used the CDC guidelines to show how COVID safe they really are. Backyard barbecue. Good idea. Going to the movies. Bad idea. Staying home. Great idea. That's what we're doing. Going into a bar or a restaurant. Really bad idea. Whatever plans you have, the CDC urging to do it around those who are vaccinated. If gathering with family and friends, remember that spending time outside with others who are vaccinated will help to prevent transmission. Dr. Amy Edwards with University Hospitals wants to be clear. This isn't a call to not have fun. Just do it the right way. I'm not trying to be a killjoy, but that is exactly the setting that spreads COVID. Marissa Signs, 3 News. Another precaution Dr. Edwards mentioned, wear your mask. Doesn't hurt. Okay, now to something you've all probably used, seen, or at least heard about. We're talking about those little emojis on our phones. Do you use emojis when you text? I use them. I don't use them as much as I would say the average person does. Yeah. But I do, from time to time, dabble. I go through waves. I'll be like all emoji-rific, and then I'm like, eh, <laughs> emoji forget it. Well, there's a new study out that shows the most used emojis by Ohioans, and it was conducted by Emojistats.org. 
There's a new website. They collect data <laughs> across the country. So let's name the top three. First up, face with tears of joy emoji. That's the one I use when I'm laughing like really hysterically. Yes, like, I, use, I use that just too. awesome. Second, not much different, also laughing, uh, crying. So, you know, I guess the tears would be the, the common thread there. That one actually looks like it's pretty heart-wrenching to me. Third is the red heart emoji. Who doesn't use the heart? Yeah. I mean, come on. I use that with my daughter, with my mom, with my wife. So I, I use that one probably more than I use anyone else. Although I'll say that one right below it, I don't know what that's called. It's kind of the, the tilted face with yeah. the tears. I, that's the one I use for laughing. And also because of our show, we did a story a couple of months ago that like skeleton face. Yeah, the dead face or whatever. I'm dead. Yeah. You know, I, I use that too just because all the kids are hip? doing it. Yeah. yeah, I try to be hip. You know, I'm trying as hard as I can. I'm woefully uh, lacking in that department. But you know, I see the kids using it, so I try it too. And the no. data was collected from May of 2020 to May of 2021. Now, get this. The emoji that ranked number one here in Ohio is the laugh cry one. That was also ranked number one nationwide. I guess so it's popular everywhere. We're all in there, right? Yeah. 400 million uses in one year. Now, for perspective, the heart emoji had nearly 72 million uses in one year. We actually put a little bit of a poll into our uh, What's New Facebook group. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, it's private, but you can ask. We'll gladly let you in yeah, to please join, join the team. We it's have a lot tons of fun. of fun in there. So there's a poll going about what's your favorite emoji. And uh, I think a lot of folks were saying that it was the heart emoji and then the laughing emoji too. But I added, uh, I don't even know if anybody saw that I added one. I actually added another category, oh, which of course was the sobbing, crying one, and I just put, I do weather. So, you know, <laughs> it's just the yeah. fact of the matter. <laughs> There's a lot that of could tears. could be the official emoji of the meteorologist. It's, it's very much, you know, tears of joy and then tears of sobbing and anguish. So Frustration, yeah. the whole bit. Definitely. Um, here's my question. How do they know how many emojis are being used? How many what? How many of these emojis are, like, they know that 400 million yeah. heart emojis, like, Who's reading our text messages to figure that out? Well, I think you could also probably lump in social posts and stuff like that. A lot of I yeah. use a lot of emojis in social posts. I probably do. shouldn't do that many, but it's a, it's yeah. an interesting thing. So far, as we, as we mentioned, the three news, uh, what's new page is hearts number one. Hearts number one. The red heart. Yeah. That's my number one too. Okay, bring on the schnitzel and potato pancakes. Heart. Mike Polk Jr. taking us inside Oktoberfest at the fairgrounds in Berea for a sneak peek of today's kickoff event. The later hosen better be making an appearance is all I have to say. I, I'm saying that uh, there's a better than average chance we see them. Then stepping back in time, a look ahead to Clay Park's popular Yankee Peddler Festival. Aww. That's coming up and clicking in Cleveland. Yeah, it's old school. And Betsy doing double duty tonight with the weather. Man, we used to go to Yankee Peddler every Did you? summer. Wow. Apple fritters, period. Ooh. End of story. That's basically the only reason <laughs> we'd go. All right, 74 today's high, 52 the morning low. We had some places that made it down into the 40s, so I heard on my at Betsy Kling Twitter feed this morning. Morning. Uh, where do we go from here? I'll tell you all about it next.
All right, Friday evening, holiday weekend, sunshine, comfortable conditions, happy people. It's Good day to be a meteorologist in Northeast Ohio. <laughs> exactly. Do I get to give the kick? The, the Matt Wins kick? Absolutely. All right, temperatures into the 60s as we get into the early morning hours. By tomorrow morning, though, we'll be in the mid and upper 50s around Northeast Ohio, and we will get to see some sunshine. But there are clouds, there are showers out to the west of us, and those will be catching up to us as we get through the, uh, especially tomorrow night into Sunday. So kind of the mid to latter half of the weekend. A lot of these rain showers are very light at this point. There is some dry air in place, so we have this kind of a game of tug of war with our rain chances, but it does look like by tomorrow night we will have a likelihood of those rain chances swinging through. In the meantime, just high thin clouds will continue to pour into the area tonight. We'll continue to see those clouds thicken up as we get into the day tomorrow, and then again, the rain chances really start to pop once we get into the evening and overnight. As we zoom down into the lakeshore areas, uh, there is a look at beautiful CLE, and the Variably cloudy skies will be with us tonight. We will be in the mid and upper 50s to start the day tomorrow. Again, this morning we had low 50s, even a couple backyard thermometers reading some upper 40s in some places. So uh, definitely feeling the chill. A lot of great campfire opportunities tonight and through the entirety of the weekend, really. Clouds will be on the increase then through the day tomorrow. The, basically, they'll be thickening through the day. Rain chances will arrive late, probably evening into the overnight, with temperatures tomorrow topping out right around. Around 80, we will have a whisper of a southerly breeze, and that should be just enough to uh, kind of battle back against the lake breeze. Beautiful day all in all. Here's your National Design Mart on the hour forecast. Again, we're going to start 50s in the early morning, but once the sun comes up, it's going to do its job, get us warming, and we'll probably be up right around the 80 degree mark mid to late afternoon. So I know there's a lot of people with outdoor plans through the weekend. This looks like it's going to be a great Saturday afternoon for us. Even on the lake, this is like the other best place to watch the air show. A lot of folks have put their boats in, take their boats right around and park off of downtown Cleveland. So be advised, there's still a lot of junk in the water. If you are a boater, there's, remember we had that uh, whoosh of water not too long ago that kicked some trees out into the lake and whatnot. So there is some uh, big floaties hanging out there. Just keep in mind, southerly breezes will keep the waves flat. So a nice afternoon. Union Home Mortgage Forecast. Up around 80 tomorrow. We'll stay in the upper 70s then through the rest of the holiday weekend. Rain chances tomorrow night into early Sunday. And by Sunday afternoon, I think we'll see considerably clearer skies. By Labor Day, a few pop-up rain chances. About 20% chance of an isolated shower Monday afternoon. Back to near 80 on Tuesday. Another frontal boundary is coming in. That'll kick off another round of rain and rumbles by late Tuesday. That's going to kick us back then into the 70s, the low to mid-70s, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next next week. Jay. Mm, Betsy, that is a spectacular forecast. Looking forward to the weekend. Well, part two of our Rediscovering Ohio series tonight takes us to Oktoberfest at the Cuyahoga County Fairs. It's going on fairgrounds. It's going on right now, and it's considered one of, if not the largest Oktoberfest outside of Munich, Germany. How about that? This year, you can enjoy the festivities for two weekends. It kicks off this weekend, Labor Day weekend, and it will start right back up next weekend. And of course, we sent our Mike Polk Jr. to get a preview. After taking a year off, Oktoberfest is back and open for business. Well, not quite yet. Tonight, uh, it's empty right now, but I'm previewing it. Come and look where things are going to be. I'm excited. This is my millionth time back here myself, but what is uh, up with Oktoberfest this year? We're really excited. For the first time ever, we're going to go to two weekends. Woo! Because of the loss in 2020, we kind of wanted the city to get a taste of two weekends. We also felt with, with everything that's going on, we had the ability to social distance more. We are now in the Majestic Beer Hall. And right now, this is the calm before the storm, obviously. I've been to this. This thing is going to be rocking. You could find some amazing musicians and acts from all over the United States and across the world in this, in this building. You know, we have Bruce Springsteen tribute here next weekend from the local bands of Escape Tonight and Journey, um, the Spasmatics tomorrow. If this is your first time coming to Oktoberfest, what's something that somebody absolutely has to see? Oh, that's a tough question. Yeah, I know. That's why I pose them. I'm a hard-hitting journalist. <laughs> I would say, honestly, this, this building at night is a lot of fun. And the Glockenspiel, which we'll show you here a little later, is, is probably the, the one location that everyone comes every year to see. It is unique. Uh, 
But also, if you're bringing kids, there's a lot of things to do for them. You know, whether it's the wiener dog races right next door to inflatables or the food, there's just there's so much to do. You can almost not do everything in one day here. Will you walk me around and show me where things are going to be rocking? Yeah, perfect. Let's do it. Yep. A lot of the traditional fair stuff for people, they dig that. I like that you have a Jägermeister VIP tent. It's actually one of our hottest tickets. We sold more of those GA tickets up leading to this week. Jägermeister yeah, VIP. Yeah, it's crazy. I want that t-shirt that yeah. says that. Here it is. There it is. The Taj Mahal of Oktoberfest. Tell me about this thing. So in Munich, in the center of the town, they have a glockenspiel with a big clock that rings on the hour. So what we did is we replicated it. So on the hour, every hour, we have characters that come out, um, local musicians. This is the uh, largest glockenspiel on this side of the pond. Do you ever have weird surprises come out of there? We have some tricks up our sleeves oh, every year. All right. It all nice depends on who comes in, and yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Every hour changes. It's uh, about quarter past. Thanks. Plenty of ice cold beer stands. I like to see this. This festival's coming together nicely. Over a thousand kegs just from the Polaner Brewery over in Germany come across on a boat. We put the order in uh, in April. Mm. It takes them that long to get it over here. Wow. Especially with the shipping problems. In the yeah, I can right imagine. So, yeah. You must have been freaked out a little bit. You saw that like stuck cargo ship. You're like, yeah. my beer better not be on that thing in that canal. The beer all got here, right? It, it's all here. Yep. Oh, it's That's all here. a relief. Thank you. You hear that, Cleveland? The beer made it. I mean, you can imagine how great it's going to be. Oktoberfest, two weekends, starting right now, Cleveland. Prost! Hey, couple of fun. <laughs> wow. First of all, here are your Oktoberfest beers. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And the official October. I, they only had two, so I'm using oh, this red lobster nice. glass. They're plastic, so they're lightweight. <laughs> I think plastic works. Plastic's also probably for safety reasons, if mm -hmm. I had to guess. Two quick Oktoberfest wow. facts for you guys. One of them is it actually started in Germany in Oct real October, didn't used to start back in September, but they just literally moved it because the weather's better in September. Yeah, that works. So it, it's, that's why it's called that, though. Yeah, but September it's, Fest doesn't have the same rain. No, very no. pragmatic of the Germans, though. <laughs> I think we can agree. And then the other one is Albert Einstein worked at Oktoberfest in 1896 as an electrician. I think that's interesting. That wow, is interesting. did he really? Yes, he did. That's, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I want to say to the uh, to the organizers of Oktoberfest that when we were watching the piece, Mike says one year he wants to come out yeah. of the of the little deal there at the on the top of the hour. Yes, I we do. We need so, to make that happen. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm totally down for it. I said it's also a lot of pressure though because I what, you have to be there at exactly the right time because they yeah. come out at the right hour. <laughs> Punctuality's never been my strong suit. I would say you probably need to be there earlier in the day rather I can, than later I'm just gonna, too. I just want to be able to come out and announce <laughs> like I'm like. It's about quarter after, and then I go back in. So That would yeah. be Mike Polk fashion. Hey, Absolutely. I'm available. I'm available to come out of your big clock anytime you guys want me to, Oktoberfest. Love yeah. to. <laughs> what is it? What's the thing? Prost? Prost. Yeah, Prost. 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 I thought that was Prost. a Viking yeah, thing. We're prosting. We're prosting. On that note, we should have That's Oktoberfest it. every month. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right, All Mike, right. thanks. Always good to see you. No problem. Thanks Have for a great weekend. Trust you guys. Coming up Trust. for us after the break, a huge milestone for Walls of Love, how the nationwide organization is bringing their success in helping others here to downtown Cleveland. And comforting others, the special story behind this dog and his love for life and people after a pretty tough life. It's our show of something good. It's coming up. I was so sorry, I didn't know that there was a break in between. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry.
All right, time to see what's clicking in Cleveland on this Friday before Labor Day. Digital anchor Stephanie Haney is out this week, so the queen of pop break, Kiara Cotton, is back to fill us in. Hi again, Key. Hi, Jay. We start today with the Cleveland Indians spreading some love around town. The team announced today that they're partnering with the organization Walls of Love to install its 1,000th wall. It'll be a long fencing outside of Progressive Field, officially going up tomorrow at 10 a.m. People are encouraged to donate supplies that others may need, like hats or hygiene products, like you see here. The organization launched in 2018 and has walls all over the nation. But to have number 1,000 marked here in Cleveland, well, that's pretty special. Now to Canal Fulton, where you can step back to 200 years ago for the 48th annual Yankee Peddler, Peddler Festival. The annual event returns to Clay Park Resort a week from tomorrow for the next three weekends. You can see the dates there on your screen. More than 150 artists and crafters will be on site, so guests can experience Pioneer America. We have a link to buy tickets on WKYC.com. And many people have a long weekend ahead to kick off Labor Day, the unofficial end to summer. But don't worry, we have you covered with so many things to do around Northeast Ohio before we say goodbye to the season. Just head over to WKYC.com or our WKYC app for a full list of 15 things to do this weekend around the region. You can also text the word Labor Day as one word to 216-344-3300 and we'll send a link to our Labor Day guide directly to your phone. And also on our site, a guide to how to safely gather this weekend to make sure you and your loved ones have a healthy and COVID-free holiday. Jay and Betsy, do you guys have any plans this weekend? Uh, we are having a couple friends over on Sunday, just two people. Nice. And that means Saturday we're cleaning, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm doing the safest social distancing activity you can. What's that? You're going Boating. on your boat. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, you know, you're out away from everybody. You're enjoying the sun and the water. Mm -hmm. We'll be at the beach for part of Saturday, and I'm looking forward to it. Good. Good. What I want to thank. Plans? Yeah, what are your plans? I don't have any big plans. Just clean my apartment. Drake just dropped a new album, so that's my weekend. Play that on loop over <laughs> yeah. and over. Have you, heard it, have you heard it yet? Yep, all you, the way through. And you love it? Mm -hmm. Two thumbs up. Yep. All right. Yeah, most Drake fans I've talked to say it's great. Yeah. So there you go. Have a great weekend, Keith. You too. Well, next up, we know dogs, and really, all animals are the best. But coming up, we'll introduce you to Maggie, who's going to show that you can go above and beyond. Her own life was so turned upside down, and this story is inspiring. Wow. Then, on What Matters Most at 6, hometown hero ride. With the air show in town, the Thunderbirds went above and beyond for one local firefighter. Today, we've got that story and more coming up at 6. Right now, time for our pop quiz. Many of you may be looking ahead to a long weekend with Labor Day on Monday. Our pop quiz question, when did Labor Day become a federal holiday? There are your choices. We'll tell you the answer after the break. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Before the break, we asked, when did Labor Day become a federal holiday? Nope, I'm just staying right here. Hello, hello, five, four, three, two, one. Of course, the weather's cooperating, but organizers, yeah, organizers have no idea how many people to expect.
Okay, before the break, we wanted to know when did Labor Day become a federal holiday? Got any guesses? I do not. It's been a long time. 1894. It's always observed on the first Monday in September here in the United States. This is a great story, okay? Tissue moment. A once severely abused dog is now living her best life. Maggie was about five years old when she was rescued. She doesn't have her eyes, she's missing an ear, and her new mom, Carlin, didn't plan on adopting her just to foster her. But when Maggie became best friends with Carlin's other rescue dog, well, she could not let her go. So Carlin trained Maggie to navigate the world without sight. And now Maggie is a therapy dog who adores people. Wow. She meets with seniors with dementia. And she also visits police officers, firefighters, and kids to spread an anti-bullying message. What a sweet, sweet dog. It certainly is. Love that. By the way, I want to let everybody know, uh, I know everybody's asking about Laura Queso. We have no word yet. She no. is uh, officially on maternity leave, and we have no baby news to give. So when we hear it, I'm sure we'll let everybody know It's about coming it. soon. Some, sometime soon. Okay, thanks so much for watching What's New. I hope you have a safe and happy Labor Day weekend. We will see you again next week. What Matters Most with Lena starts right now. Deadly plane crash. Tragedy in Medina County when a pilot loses control of a small aircraft landing in a lake. We'll have the latest from the scene. Controlling COVID. With the Labor Day holiday upon us and a high number of daily cases, new concerns over how to keep the pandemic under control this weekend. Hometown hero. As an adult, you think like, well, I'll never get a chance to do that, but uh, the chance presented itself and I was selected. The ride of a lifetime for a local firefighter who got to experience the Cleveland Air Show in the air with the Thunderbirds. And army of worms. It made me want to cry because, you know, I'd have to replace this whole yard and I can't afford it. First, cicadas. Now another type of insect is wreaking havoc on people's lawns across Northeast Ohio. From the WKYC studios, this is What Matters Most. Good evening. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Lena Lai. Russ and Laura are off tonight. Let's get right to a developing story in Medina County. A small plane crash near the Wadsworth Airport just off of 94 and Rittman Roads. It happened this morning when the plane careened into a small pond, 